Hi everyone, welcome to action. Bible. Summer. Welcome to session number four, and we're looking at, at worship. Um, and if, if you guys remember the last session, what was it, what was it about? Let's not miss our part, right? We don't want to miss our part, just like I didn't want to miss my part on the drum. And what's our part? Praising the Lord. Praising God. And what can we praise God for that the um, animals and the angels can't praise God for? Or creation? Everything praises God. Everything praises God. And what, what can we praise God for that the angels and creation and the animals can't praise God for? Jesus only died for us. For us. So that's the part that only we can praise God for, right? Yep. And this time we're going to look at idolatry. So let me start with a poem. This is a poem by a New England poet called Robert Frost. And he famously wrote, Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. And in life, there are basically two roads, and they're worshiping the one true God is one of the roads, and the other road is the opposite of worship. But what is the opposite of worship? Idol worship. Yeah, yeah, basically. Um, the, I mean, we, we might think that the opposite of worship is not worshiping, but God made us to worship. worship. He made us to give our hearts to something. So either we're giving our hearts and worshiping the one true God, or Boy. we are worshiping other things. Mm -hmm. And idolatry uh, means worshiping other things. Um, and idolatry is the opposite of worship. And throughout the, throughout the Bible, the biggest trap for the people of God is idolatry. And it's still the biggest trap for, for the people of God. Yeah. Um, so as you read through your Action Bibles, um, you will see a lot about idolatry. Uh, here's one example, especially as, you're, as you'll, um, you'll see people worshiping um, idols instead of worshiping the one true God. And it's, maybe it's hard for us to relate to that, right? Because we, we don't um, really feel that, uh, here's, here's a little chess piece, but we can think of this as an idol too. We don't really feel any need to worship um, something like this, right? We don't really relate to it. This isn't something um, um, that we feel tempted to um, worship. But really, um, what are idols? Um, we can think about anything um, that shouldn't drive us over the edge, but it does if it's taken away. So can you think of anything that if we're taken away, you shouldn't be super upset about it, but maybe you are. I've got my hand on one modern example of, of an idol, um, and that's this right here, a, a phone and technology. That tells us something else about idols. Idols can be good things that become God things. So there's nothing wrong with technology, and we can think about all the wonderful advances in um, medicine and communication and, and all kinds of different fields that have advanced because of technology. But when a good thing becomes a God thing, um, that's an idol. So something like this can be a modern-day idol. So don't think so much about something like this. Think about something like this. Or... Um, think about our own, our own, our own hearts. Idols don't have to be good things that become God things. Idols can be bad things that lead us deeper and deeper into sin. Bad things that that bring about sin. They could be um, sinful desires in our own hearts. It could be a desire for our own glory, a desire for the approval of um, of others. It could be a desire for power, control. It could be sinful anger. Um, um, so what's so bad about about idols? Why are idols so bad? 
because they drag you into bad things. Yeah, okay, so idols can be bad things that, that, that drag us into sin? If you are, like, walking on a street or something, and you drop your idol, it'll just shatter into a million pieces. Yeah, so the, the, this, the, um, the Bible talks to us about, about, about idols. Um, why are they so bad? Um, idols take the place of God in our lives. Um, an idol can, can shatter, or, or there's a couple of Psalms. One of them is Psalm 115 that talks about idols. And um, idols have eyes, but they can't see. They have arms, but they can't do anything with them. Um, and, um, and we become, that Psalm 115 also says that we, uh, they have ears, but they can't hear. And Psalm 115 says that we become like idols, um, like the idols we're worshiping. So we become like the things that we're worshiping um, that don't have any life. So um, if we are worshiping idols, um, life w will become um, lifeless. The, the eternal life with God uh, that God promises and joy in his presence, um, idolatry doesn't lead to that. It leads instead to eternal separation from God. And that brings up another thing about idols. Idols promise so much. Usually they're things um, that look awesome and we like them and we think they're going to bring about a lot of good things in our lives, but we're led towards death and eternal separation from God. So that's another true thing about idols, that they promise a whole lot, but they deliver um, the opposite. Um, they, don't, they don't deliver. on the, Basically, they're, 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 they're false promises. And um, our enemy, the devil, uses them because they provide false promises. So we want to be like Jesus. We want to worship God and become more and more like Jesus. We don't want to be idolatrous and become more and more lifeless more and more spiritually blind and spiritually unable to hear and unable even to do things, kind of like um, this idol that has no life. So let's worship the one true God because he has made a way. He sent his son, Jesus. So let's worship him uh, in Jesus' name and in spirit and in truth. Bye for now. Bye.